So this project actually started in the summer of last year. That's when I originally began cutting out the parts for it. But unfortunately, because shipping from China takes so gosh darn long, and because uh, one of our shipments got messed up a bit and I got only one linear rod instead of two, um, it was the construction of the laser was delayed until I had enough motivation and the time to do it, and winter break seemed the best time to start constructing it. Over Christmas break, I also got a sort of GoPro, I guess. It's a little action camera that'll shoot in 4K, um, and what you're seeing right now is the footage from that. So this machine actually reuses a couple of parts from my 3D printer. Uh, we have a couple of linear bearings, a couple of rod holders, um, some cable chains, GT2 belt for the pulleys, a couple of bearings that will serve as the uh, ends of the pulleys, um, motor mounts, the laser obviously, and power supply which we won't be using, the cutout parts, the stepper motors and printer board, and the linear rods which you can see in the back there. So the first step to constructing this laser cutter was to get the y-axis rails mounted. Now the y-axis is the long axis in this case, depending on what you do it may be different. Um, so I just needed a way to mount the long, the four long one meter um, rails and to do that I just cut some small bits out of MDF that would allow me to mount them. And I just glued that to the MDF base using some CA glue. And on top of that goes the mount for the pulley that will feed the return line of belt. Um, the way I'm screwing this in, these are actually screws from the 3D printer. I'm drilling it out for the thread, and then I'm drilling out the space for the head, and then just zipping them right in. So that's how I attach each and every bit, and I'll just give you a little close-up here of how it's done. After that, I can measure out the distance for the next support and install that into place. The next step will be sliding the linear rails through the holes and then securing them. Now I put the linear bearings onto the rails before feeding them through the next hole because I won't be able to remove these very easily once they're locked in. These rails are secured with a couple of uh, rod holders that I got off of eBay. One important part of a laser cutter, or any CNC machine for that matter, is making sure that the axes move freely. So I'm just testing that the bearings don't have any binding or any trouble moving along the rods. It's also beneficial to clean off the rods with something like paint thinner or some sort of rubbing alcohol 
to remove any adhesive or dust particulates that may have built up over time. Then I installed the motor mounts onto the Y-axis. Repeat this process for the other side, and then you will have your Y-axis in place. Next, I took the gantry piece and I filed out um, some lines in there that will allow the bearing blocks to sit nice and flat. I also drilled some holes in there for zip ties to pass through and secure the bearings in place. And again, it's very beneficial to check for smooth movement. And once again, with the x-axis, we're making sure that the bearings go on before we tighten everything down. To get the carriages aligned properly, I butted them up against the end stops and screwed it into place there, making sure that they remained parallel. This is important because we don't want the two gantry things to be out of whack and then have the x-axis be a diagonal uh, or not perpendicular to the y-axis. When you have one of these rods installed, it should slide fairly easily. Um, and if you have two installed, then it should be, become much more square and rigid. You could, in theory, do this with one axis motor, but I instead choose to use two for the sake of better accuracy and less slop or lashback over the progression of the X axis. Next was attaching the mount for the laser. It was essentially the same process as for the gantry pieces. You just file a groove into the bottom and then drill some holes for the zip ties to pass through. Once you've gotten all of the axes assembled, it should slide very, very easily, which means that the stepper motors will not have to work hard. To mount the laser, I just used one of the triangular pieces I had cut before, which most of them I actually did not up end up using, and then drilled two holes through that for zip ties to pass through. The laser is just zip tied in place. It might be beneficial to put some glue on it, but for now, this will do the trick. The belts are attached simply by drilling holes through the piece that they need to attach to and then wrapping them through the hole and then zip tying themselves together by having the belt mesh with itself and that keeps the belt in place and it keeps everything tight. The pulleys on the other end, the ones that aren't the stepper pulleys, are just made from a screw, a bearing, and a couple of assorted washers. The next step was to install the cable trains. I had just enough of this cable train chaining whatever it is to actually get both axes to move to their fullest extent. This stuff, although not essential for small CNC machines, is great for larger ones because it keeps all the cabling and stuff out of the way and from getting caught in the machine. Here I'm soldering extensions for the motors and also soldering the two Y-axis motors together. Alright, we're going to do a quick systems check just to verify that everything that should be working is working properly. So I've got the manual control up here on the 3D printer. I've got these plugged in. I don't actually know where this is supposed to go. I got the fan plugged in and we're going to see how things work. So let's try going forward on the X just one step here. Okay, it doesn't seem to be doing much. Oh, okay, so apparently X is this motor. Again, I haven't set up the end stops or anything, so that's where that is. Uh, let's try the Y. Okay, so the Y appears to be the Y axis, which is, I mean, good, but yeah. Um, and then I guess this is the Z axis, so let's just verify that. Yep, that is the Z axis. So, that's pretty cool. And uh, I guess we'll try the fan as the laser, so let's just set this to 1. Turn that on, and you can see we have laser. So, 
there we go. I guess the systems are working. Now all I have to do is wire these two motors together, get everything centered up, and then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. And then we'll do a test laser. So, yeah. So before showing you guys how I actually do laser cutting slash engraving, uh, I decided to go ahead and do some test cuts. So I did a, a couple of text things, then I started off with uh, my channel logo, and then I made this, which is pretty cool. I also moved the laser cutter here. There was a load of foam that I had to remove from the room, um, and so yeah, it has a dedicated spot now. Uh, my B70 is under the bed, and I also have this exhaust blower here, which is nice. Uh, it's also slightly loud, but it allows me to exhaust some air from the room so that it doesn't smell like burning wood in here all the time, which is nice. So, yeah. So I figured it would be good if I included a sort of tutorial on how to actually engrave an image using a laser cutter and a free program called Inkscape. Uh, anyways, you're going to want to open your image and resize it to the appropriate dimensions in Inkscape and then hit trace bitmap and play around a bit with the actual settings until you get something acceptable. If you had a bit of graininess like I did, uh, you can go ahead and trim that in a program such as paint.net. And then once you have your nice little image that you want to engrave, you're going to go to path and then make sure you have everything highlighted. I didn't do this the first time. But you're going to highlight everything, and you're going to hit path, object to path. And what that's going to do is it is going to generate a path for a machine head to follow. Um, next, you can use the JTEC Phototonics laser tool. I'll have a link in the description. And it essentially allows you to have custom G-code for turning a laser on and off and following that G-code path. So, as you can see here, I have generated the laser G-code, and there's a load of arrows there. That's what all the dark blue stuff is. Um, after you make this G-code, you can open it up in your 3D printing software. And after this is done, you can just hit Start Print, and this will trace the outline of all of the black areas. So what you're going to want to do here is open up the 305 Engineering Raster G-Code Generator, which I have a uh, link for in the description again, um, and just set it to everything you need with the laser on and off commands, and apply that, and it will generate a G-Code for you. Now, don't move your workpiece while you're doing this. Don't move the little piece of plywood or whatever you're trying to engrave. And that's it'll just raster right over the existing stuff and generate a nice image for you. Also, it's very, 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 I could not how stress important this is to have dedicated laser glasses that are designed to block out the specific frequencies and wavelengths of the light that is coming out of your laser. Because these things are very powerful, obviously they can melt stuff and burn stuff, and they can cause eye damage if you look at them for a long enough time. So definitely if you're doing a laser project like this, make sure you have eye protection.
So this is the final test product uh, after calibration and messing around with the machine for a while. I like it quite a lot. There's a lot of things that need to be improved. Uh, for example, I need to get this machine to be able to cut foam board, sheets of foam, which is why I built it so large in the first place. However, I do like the print quality, or not the print quality, but the engraving quality so far. It's actually decent enough to the point where you can see the U.S. Army logo, the U.S. Air Force text, and the actual tail number on the B-70, which is 20001, which is pretty cool, and that's, that's very, very small text. So I'm impressed with the resolution, I'm impressed with the accuracy. You can make those raster lines closer if you would like to get it darker. But uh, yeah, this has been my laser cutter, and that's basically it. And I'll see you guys whenever.